It is so great to be back um, here in, in Dublin. My wife and I were here um, just a couple of years ago and absolutely fell in love with this place and, uh, and with the people. We drove around the island. We started in Dublin and went counterclockwise uh, around the island. Um, it was supposed to be a golfing trip, which uh, uh, turned out to be a trip for my wife and I, but she decided to bring my best friend with me, which was my set of golf clubs, so I got to play a little bit of golf. Uh, and um, uh, Christy Moore is a favorite of mine, and as we drove through Liston, Varna, I got to play the song, which was kind of a magical moment for me. And I found out at dinner last night uh, from Una that not everybody paid to get in to see the concerts uh, in Liston, Varna. Um, Una tells me she wasn't one of those, but she knows of some people who, uh, uh, who did. Um, also here um, in, in Dublin, we joined the lineup to see the, uh, the Book of Kells just, uh, just outside our door here. And we found it hard not to reflect on, on that, um, that juxtaposition about you know, the venerable uh, and the modern that, that really surrounds us here. The fact that today we create uh, more and more, uh, but we hold on to less and less. Uh, here we have a book that, that dates back more, more than a millennium. And in a college where people have come to learn and study for more than 400 years. And outside the room right now, uh, young people on their mobile phones are sending photos that will delete themselves uh, within 10 seconds. And so the eternal lives alongside the incredibly uh, very, very short-lived. But enough about the world's ancient history. I want to talk a little bit about our own uh, ancient history. So I want to have a show of hands uh, first. How many of you at one point in your life uh, stored your music on a CD rack? Show of hands, how many stored your music on a, okay. How many of you have ever dropped a roll of film off for processing? This is a, th this differentiates or tells me the age of the audience. Um, how many of you know what a roll of film is? <laughs> I could ask it reverse, there'd be very few hands that would go up. Uh, but we're all aware of the, the, uh, the change that's happening around us, the, the innovation, the, the technologi technological progress. It really is uh, inescapable. But how often uh, do we pause to take stock of the pace of that change, the speed at which our world is evolving, and the impact these transformations are having on the way we live and on the field in which we choose to work? Now, millennials won't believe this, but only... A little more than a decade ago, a fax machine was a staple of business communication. And just a few short years ago, we used to watch all our shows, all our TV shows on TV. And this one will shock the younger folks. We used to watch them when the TV executives said we had to watch them. <laughs> there were excuses like, I can't come over tonight because Coronation Street is on or Survivor or something else. The speed of change and, and innovation and disruption is accelerating. We can feel it and we see it. Once in a lifetime revolutions in technology now seem to happen every decade. The classic iPod debuted in 2001 and was discontinued in 2014. Industries are being disrupted overnight on both sides of the Atlantic. And this is critically important because this is the future in which the insurance companies that we serve will operate. And this is the imperative that is driving the discussion today which in, within the North American insurance industry. So how to respond to that change, changes to what we currently insure and how we insure it. The growth of ride-sharing services and their effect on car ownership, especially among younger people. The potential impact of autonomous cars and what they mean for our traditional business model and our traditional definition of risk. Not to mention the fact that some are already predicting that insurance for self-driving cars may ultimately be provided by the car makers themselves. Now some of you may be familiar with a concept known as Amara's Law. In a nutshell, it states that we tend to overestimate the impact of new technology in the short term, but underestimate its impact in the long run. There's a recurring uh, cycle, a recurring pattern of hype, 
followed by disillusionment, and then followed by real and meaningful impact. So make no mistake, we have moments of doubt, and we may have moments of doubt and skepticism, but the changes in our world are going to affect our industry and affect it over the long run. The question we all need to ask ourselves is what are we going to do about it? To prepare for tomorrow, we need a clear sense of where we stand today. In a time of rapid change, it's more important than ever to understand our customers and our potential customers, understand their attitudes towards the world and towards us as an industry. So we asked them. Earlier this year, IBC conducted public opinion research across Canada. We also gathered people together in focus groups. And what we found was interesting. In some cases, what we found was surprising. But in most cases, I think the results are relevant in equal measure on both sides of the Atlantic. So what do our clients want from us? Well, they want more choice and customization, just like they get from other companies and other aspects of their lives. They want the way in which we communicate with them to evolve with the times. They want fresh thinking from all parties, from our, from our industry, but also from government and regulators. They want to be protected from risk but not from change. Today's consumers see new ideas and new solutions all around them, but in Canada, at least, they don't see enough from us. They acknowledge that we play an important role in their lives, yet they know very little about the reality of our industry. Here's the best illustration of that. In our research, we asked people, where do you think your insurance dollar goes? How does it all break down? And what we found is that, on average, Canadians think 34% of what they pay in premiums goes to profit. I can see executives recalculating their bonuses now <laughs> based on that figure. But here's the key, the key takeaway as we see it. Our customers don't care about our problems and challenges. They just want action. They want new and better services, more customization, an overall experience that's closer to the ones they get every day from the apps on their phone. They want things like the ability to arrange all their insurance matters online and hold all relevant proof documents on their mobile device. The ability to turn on and off their insurance coverage based on when they drive and when they choose instead to bike, walk, or take a trip. The ability to pick and choose the insurance benefits they want to buy, the kind of customization I was talking about earlier. The ability to influence their insurance rates by sharing data from their vehicle to demonstrate their good driving habits. Now these are just a few examples, many more exist and will be driven by many of the people in this room uh, in the years ahead. But here's the, the common thread and one of the biggest challenges that we face in Canada. We can't provide many of these products and services due to regulatory restrictions. We simply can't deliver everything that our customers want from us. The U.S. is a, a bit of a different story. They have less regulation in certain states and, not coincidentally, more innovation. But in Canada, it feels as though we're about to enter the fight of our lives and we've got one hand tied behind our back. Now I'll be participating in a panel uh, later on this afternoon and perhaps get an opportunity to share with you a little bit more about the Canadian experience. But it really boils down to this. We are a regulated industry. We always will be, and frankly, we always should be. But stale regulation supports the status quo. It acts as a disincentive to progress and better ways of doing business and serving customers. Again, to paraphrase what our customers are telling us, good regulation pr uh, protects people from risk, not from change. As an industry, we have a number of critical challenges coming our way in the years ahead. That's true in North America, and as I'm hearing this morning, it's obviously true here in Europe as well. How do we adapt the auto insurance system as autonomous cars are introduced? How do we adapt to a transportation system in which the concept of liability is going to be transformed? How do we deal with issues raised by the growing popularity of sharing services like Uber and Airbnb? Or the life insurance implications of people learning more and more about their genetic makeup, and over time, 
becoming empower, empowered to tailor and tweak who they are. Cyber, the Internet of Things, big data, the list goes on and on. But here's the key point. These issues don't just affect us. They affect everyone. They'll have an impact on all our customers. And so, it is our belief that consumers have a vested interest in creating a better system. A system in which insurers have the flexibility to come up with affordable solutions to these challenges. We believe it's essential to put ourselves in our client's corner, to emphasize that we are striving to act on their behalf in their interests. Because to be candid, in Canada we have a long way to go. Now, we live in a time when we can see or learn or order almost anything we desire by touching the screen on our phone. I mean, I, I saw the Book of Kells in amazing and comprehensive detail long before I saw two pages peering over uh, somebody's shoulder. But yet, I live in a country where only one province has allowed for the electronic use of proof of insurance. Now, I'm from Canada, you're from Ireland and beyond, but the message here is universal. Regulators have to adapt to the world as it is and not cling to the world as it was. I'll focus on just one Canadian example, one important Canadian example, which is usage-based insurance. I can tell that here and across the EU, you're way ahead of us on this one. We're struggling to keep up. There are still tremendous barriers uh, in place, which makes very little sense. In the opinion research that we've done, fully two-thirds of respondents agree that determining premiums based on driving performance is a fair way to price auto insurance. Only one in 10 disagree. So the public sentiment is clear and it's overwhelming. And yet in Canada, we cannot use UBI to fully price premiums. In other words, consumers are being denied more accurate pricing. They're being denied the kind of innovation and forward thinking that would result in better products and better service. Consumers want a fair competition. They want good companies serving them well, using the latest technology. And regulators have a duty to protect consumers, but also to enable an environment that allows for this type of innovation. Canadian insurers have been working for some time now to make this case to policymakers. And it's important, we're not asking for protection from competition. We don't want preferential treatment. We seek only the freedom to adapt and to innovate, to use the ingenuity of our people to create a better way of doing business. What we seek is the opportunity to ourselves be the disruptors, to lead the way in creating change and a new way forward. We're doing all we can to change the dynamic as it currently exists. As the voice of Canadian insurers, our organization has made it a priority to communicate a consumer-friendly message, a message that says, Better regulation means better insurance for all. We want to encourage the kind of meaningful change that opens the door to new ideas, products, and services. In essence, we are trying to create a win-win scenario. Government gets credit for creating a more consumer-friendly marketplace. Consumers get better insurance solutions. And we get the opportunity to innovate. Ladies and gentlemen, if, if you've ever been to, uh, to New York City, you'll be familiar with their famous yellow cabs. Uh, for decades, a taxi medallion or a license to operate a cab was also a license to print money. Medallions would be passed down through the generations. And on the open market, they would sell for hundreds of thousands of dollars, sometimes close to a million dollars. Then came Uber and other ride-sharing services. In the span of a single year, the value of this medallion dropped 25%, then another 25%. It didn't take years for people to switch to Uber. It took weeks. Your computer at home, the mobile phone that you carry in your pocket, these are more than, than mere devices, more than a means of communication and data transmission. They are pipelines. And through them, new ideas and new services can instantly reach millions. They can take hold and be embraced literally overnight. And once change has been unleashed, it can never again be contained. Now there will be changes to our industry in the years ahead and there will be 
challenge us and will continue to bear witness to the impact of disruption. The responsibility of creating a modern regulatory insurance environment falls to others, but no matter where we operate, we have, we have responsibilities of our own. We must be ready to change and adapt. We must be eager to meet today's customers and tomorrow's on their terms. We must be willing to invest in the kind of new ideas that fulfill expectations and make lives better. If we focus on that kind of innovation, if we are allowed the freedom to exercise our ingenuity, then we can be the ones who shape and define the future of our business. Thank you very much for inviting me and thank you very much for listening. <laughs>